Hey all of you, hope you guys are great. So in the last video, we have worked on the fill limit functionality in our API. In this video, we're going to create the pagination system. And you know, it's very important that you must have pagination functionality. And let me show you why it's important. Just imagine that you have one lakh NFTs in your database. So when someone requests for the NFTs, you don't want to display the one lakh NFT in the very first request. That's a very bad user experience. All you have to do is to you have to display the selective amount of NFT and that's the functionality we're going to build right now. So hope you will learn something new. So let's start working where we left in the last video. So what I can do, I can simply mm, let's uh, mm, let's let's come up here and we have this nine result. Let's bring this down and let me show you that. So if I make a request, let's add this one. If I take this page and two, Okay, page two and limit 10. So this is the query we're going to add right now. Okay, and this is how the pagination work exactly. So all you have to do is you have to find out the page that which page you are on and how many data you want to display in per page. So here I'm saying that in page one, we want to display only 10. You can increase this number as many as you want, but I want to display only 10. So this is how we pass the query and we're going to bend the function along around this query. Okay, so that's what we have here. Let's save this one. And now what I can do, I can simply increase it to three because I have only nine results. So let's make it small so we can test that our functionality is working or not. So right now we have nine and nothing is working fine. Now we're going to make it work. So let's come here and let me give this comment pagination function. Okay, we're going to this is the shortening, this is the filtering, and this is the pagination section. So how it works. So we're going to simply copy this one and let me show you how we're going to build this. So if we are on the page one, then we want to display the data from one to 10. But if we are on page two, we want to display the data on 11 to 20. Okay. So this is the function we have to build. If we are on third page, we have to build display from 21 to 30. Okay. So now we have to build a formula and let me show you how you can build it. It's pretty easy. We'll, we'll come here and we'll take a variable called page. So first we have to take the page variable and we have to find out that which page the user is exactly. So we have the page and we're going to simply convert that to a number because it will come in the form of a string and we'll set the default value to one. Okay. So if a user don't provide any page, we have to make them to be on the page one. So this is the default value. Now we have to take the limit. Same thing we have to take. We have to get the limits and we have to convert it to a number and we have to set the default limit. So initially it's going to be uh, 10. That's it. Okay. And now we're going to create the skip value. So this is how we're going to calculate the skip value. So we have the page and we're going to manage with the one. So what it will happen. So if I'm on page number two, okay. So on the page number two, I want to display the data from 11 to 20. Okay. So what I will do if I'm on page number two, so this page variable is two, I'm going to subtract it with one. Okay. So I'll get one here and I'm going to multiply with the limit fill. So I'll get 10 here. Okay. And that's the exact data I want to skip to get the data from 11 to 20. Simple math. Again, let me repeat what I'm doing. First, I'm getting this page variable. So no matter user are on which page, okay, whatever page they are on, we are subtracting from that. And then we are multiplying with the limit. So we'll get the entire range according to the page. And here we're going to simply call the query skip method. And we're going to pass this skip. And here we're going to call this limit to limit itself and this function will already be working fine so simple logic i believe that nothing complicated you guys have understood how it's work and now let's come here and now it will work so if we come here and if we make a request you can see right now we have three results our pagination is working fine okay so to make it work on a real application all you have to do is to manipulate the page number and you will get the data and that's very easy so you can see we have three results. If we make on page one, you can see we have this three result with different name. So monster, monkey monster, let's move to the two. You can see we have two limits is also working. Let's go to the page number two. And we have this, you can see monster monkey. And let's go to the page number three, less than four is four. And here you can see we have different results. Huh? 
different results. So this is also looking fine. But what if I hit the page number six and I don't have enough data to go on the page number six? So what I will get in return of that? So here I'll get this empty, which is not good because we don't have any data on the page number six. So in that we have to add some sort of guard class, some sort of validator, which validate the page number on the base of the data. OK, so that's what we're going to do now. Let's come back here and here we're going to check if the query in the page in that scenario will take this new NFT. OK, and we'll say await. And we're going to count the number of document. So again, this function I'm getting from Mongoose. So they have in the documentation, we'll call it count document. And this will give you the length of the data you have in that particular resource. Okay, the particular NFT. So it will give me that the length. And now I'm going to use that length. I will say if skip is greater than NFT new NFTs, then in such scenario, I have to throw this error. I'll call it error. And here I'm going to say that um, this page does not exist okay so we're going to talk about more in advance about the error handling so this is how you can throw an error in between your function okay so when you will have this function whenever any error get occur it will trigger that event and it will send you in your try and catch okay and from where we can easily able to display so that's the simple logic we have built and here we can catch it and we can display now if we come and make a request you will get this failed message okay why so why we are getting this failed message we have to display the error message okay we have some problem 404 error we are getting here and that's error is fine but the error is not displaying itself okay what i can do here i can come here and here we have the query let me comment out this and if i make a request here we are getting this and if i comment it out and make a request one time again i'm getting the same result but this is not why i wanted i wanted the message and the problem I have is is greater than equal. I forgot to add the equal sign. Okay, so that's the one. And let's hit the request. And still, let's make it on one. And you can see we have the result working fine. Okay, we'll just keep it for a moment like that. We're going to make it more advanced in later. Okay, that's working fine. Not a big deal. So I hope you guys have found this video valuable. If you have any question, any doubt or any confusion about this pagination to leave in the comment section and make sure to ask all your queries in your Discord, in the Discord server and ask all your queries there so I can easily able to help you out. And I hope you guys are enjoying this API development course. I know this course is pretty huge, but this is how it's work in a real world application development. Okay. It's nothing like that. You just watch two hours video and build an application. There's a lot of things goes into development. You have to move your head around to think all the possibility which are possible in the API and what are the problems user can create on the API. So you have to predetermine those existing problems and you have to think and you have to build the logic around that. Okay, so that's the only thing I want to cover in this video. Hope you have found this valuable. Now with that, let's move to the next video. And in that we're going to do a little bit magic and you want to see what the magic we're going to do. That's what you will find in the next video. Let's move to that.